And this uh, Algebra 2 lesson is on the number E. So functions that involve uh, the number E. Let's go ahead and get started with the board problem here. So uh, let's simplify these expressions. So if you could, just pause it down here in this left-hand corner and try and simplify these if you can. Okay, and then when you're done, we'll go ahead and unpause it, you guys. All right, so I know, um, uh, set, uh, let's see, what goes into those? 3 goes into this guy 7 times. 3 goes into, into this guy 15 times. So this part reduces to 7 fifteenths. Okay, these five x's will take away five of these, so there'd be seven left on top. And this negative exponent says take them upstairs, and they go uh, become positive upstairs. So I have six of the y's upstairs. So okay, and then I'll, I'll show. I think I have all the answers on the next slide right here. Okay, and then uh, this says everything in here to the fourth power. So negative two, even in the negative, the negative is being included because the parentheses to the fourth is a positive sixteen. Powers raised to powers, I multiply them. So this will be a to the 12th, b to the 8th. Okay? And then, whoops, this should be a cubed right here. This little number right here should be a cubed. I know it's going to go big, huh? Yep. That should be a cubed right there. So um, uh, so uh, when we do that, so the cube root of 64, this says the cube root of 64 is 4. The cube root of r to the 9th, there's um, uh, 3 groups of three R's I can pull out, so there'd be R to the third. There's two groups of three S's I can pull out when there's six of them, so this would be S squared. And there's one group of the T's right there, so there we go. There's the answers to all of those. If I did them right, okay? Hopefully I did. All right, so here's the function of the number involving E. Okay, you're going to need to get a calculator. All right, hopefully you have a calculator handy. And we're going to start practicing our calculator skills here, okay? So what we're going to do is use your calculator to complete the table and round uh, to the hundred thousandths spot. So let's count them. I got my fingers out to count, you guys, okay? So hold your, your hand out and hold your fingers out. So the first digit is your tenth spot, then your hundredth spot, then your thousandths spot, then your ten thousandths spot, then your hundred thousandths spot. So to me, that is five decimals out. So, okay. So what we're going to do, this is ten uh, to the first is ten. Okay, so I'm going to plug in ten right here and ten right here. So how I would do this first is do one divided by ten. You should get point one. Then I'm going to go plus one in my calculator, so I get one point one. And then I'm going to use my little exponent feature and, and raise one point one to the tenth power, because I plug in 10 right there, and I'm going to get uh, 2.59374. Okay, now 10 squared is 100, so I'm going to plug 100 right here and 100 right here. So 1 divided by 100 in the calculator, I'm doing that right now in my calculator, so 1 divided by 100 is 0 0.01. I'm going to add um, uh, plus 1 in my calculator, so plus 1. And then I'm going to use my exponent feature. So it's either y to the x or your little caret sort of button here. So I'm going to go uh, y to the x, 100, hit equals, and you should get 2.70481. Okay, this is 1,000. So I'm going to plug in 1,000. 1 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.001. And then plus 1 is 1.001, and I'm going to raise that to the thousands power, okay? And then do it to the 10,000, to the 100,000, to the million right there, okay? So we should get those numbers, okay? And what happens is, is these numbers start getting closer and closer and closer to this number that's called E right here, okay? Notice, notice this one right here between 100,000 and a million, which is a big jump, you guys. Look how much the decimal changed. It only went from 2.71827 to 2.71828. And the reason is, is because I'm, I'm starting to add basically the number 0 right here. So the bigger this number gets right here, 1 over a big number is adding almost 0. So when I start adding 0, whoops, uh, that wasn't supposed to slip. So when I start adding 0 in there, uh, it starts getting to uh, an insignificant change right here. So this leads us to the natural base E, okay? The natural base E is an irrational number. It's a number E. So E is a new number, like pi is irrational, 3.14159 something, something, something. So it keeps going for never, 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 never repeats, never terminates, never ends. Same with uh, this one. So as n approaches this function right here, 1 plus 1 over n to the n power, as n approaches infinity of that guy right there, oops, there's an email from my beautiful wife right there, Sandra. Uh, Sandra Bullock. My name's Mr. Bullock. 
anyway, so approach the numbers. Uh, e, it approaches this number, 2.71828.1828. So, so it's approaching the number E. As N approaches infinity, this approaches our number E. And E pops up, they found out a lot, uh, in nature a lot. And I don't have examples of that right now. But um, uh, So, so um, engineers use the number E a lot. And we use it a lot in this logarithms chapter, which is chapter 7 in my Algebra 2 book. So let's simplify these expressions, you guys. Okay, these are actual numbers right here. But right here, uh, E squared times E to the 6. Remember, I'm going to add those exponents. So that's going to be E to the 8 right there. Okay, here, 12 goes into 65 times, and then I'm going to subtract these exponents. e to the 8 minus 3 is e to the 5th, so that's going to get me 5e to the 5th. Okay, here I'm going to do everything to the 3rd power, so negative 10 to the 3rd. The negative is included, so negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10 is negative 1,000. Powers raised to powers, I multiply them, so that's going to get me to the negative 15x power. Okay, and remember, if you have a negative exponent, it goes downstairs and becomes a positive exponent. Okay, all right, so use a calculator to evaluate these. Okay, so punch in your calculator. Now, your E button, you guys, is usually on my calculator, it's right above my, it says LN, which means natural log. We'll learn about in a couple of sections away, you guys. Okay, so your LN button, uh, it's right around there. So if you go, you'll see an E to the X button. So if you press uh, E to the X and then press 4 right there, and then equals or execute. Okay, so uh, so second function E to the X, because it's right above your LN. So if you hit second function E to the X, and then hit 4, and then enter or execute, depending on whatever kind of calculator you have, or equals. Okay, you get uh, 54.5981503. Uh, okay, and then this one here, when you put do e to the negative 0 0.09, make sure you press the negative key, you guys, not the minus key. There's a distinction between the minus and the negative. You got to press the negative key, the one that has parentheses around it. That's your negative key. The one that doesn't is a minus key. Okay, just make sure you know how to use your calculator. All right, so graph each function, state the domain and range. Okay, this is just like uh, graphing the other ones. You do the zero and the one. So I'm going to plug in zero. E to the, uh, this times 0 is 0, so E to the 0 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3, so I'm going to graph uh, uh, 0, 3. When I plug in 1, E to the 0.25 times 1 is E to the 0.25, so punch in E to the 0.25 times 3, and you get uh, 3.85. So you're going to graph those two guys right there, and it kind of gives me a graph that kind of looks like that. State the domain and range. Your domain is all real numbers, and your range is everything above Y equals 0. All right, let's try another one here. Okay, here we have a shift right here, so I'm going to shift it first. Shift it to the right two and up one, okay? It's always opposite same, okay? Can you see it to the pink? I shifted it to the right two, up one. So this is like, like my new origin. It's not my origin, but I'm going to pretend like it's my origin. And I'm just going to graph now this stuff right here, y equals e to the negative 0.75x, and I'll do my 0, 1 trick. Okay, now this is pretend like this is my origin. I can now I just have to focus on this stuff. Okay, I took care of the pink stuff with the shift right there. Okay, so plug in zero right here. E to the zero is one. So I'm going to graph zero one. There's zero one right there. And then this one's 0.47. Now I first started graphing it, then I looked in the book. You guys, I cheated. My graph was just a little bit off. So I'm going to do negative two. Negative two would be this y axis right here. If I went back to the two, and then if I plugged in negative two right there, it gets me um, uh, 4.48. So from here, if I go up 4.48, it gets me that. That gives me a better idea what's this graph going to look like. So there it is right there. There's your domain and range. Your range is uh, y is greater than one. It's this asymptote right here. All right, and then what else do I have? Uh, uh, natural base graph. Okay, so this is just something we've done before. This is found on my textbook on page 493. Exponential growth if um, if uh, this is a positive x and it's uh, dk if it's a negative x right there. Okay, e is is greater than one. E is uh, 2.71. Okay. Uh, all right, so continuous compound interest formula. There's that right there. If it says continuous compound interest, so let's just try an example right here. You deposit $2,500 into an account that pays 5% annual interest. Compounded continuously. What's the balance after each time amount? Okay, so we're just going to plug in. Uh, uh, this is 0 0.05. So that goes right here, 0 0.05, and then I'm going to do two years right here. Okay, 25 is your initial amount. That's this one right here. The 25 is that P. 
Okay, so it's just number crunching, and if you do it correctly, that'll be your answers right there. Okay, and if you're in my class, I would assign that as your homework. Take care, you guys.